Welcome friends. We are going to learn about problems on train. In problems on train, generally we have to find quantities like time, length, distance and speed. And the relation between these three quantities is given by the formula speed equal to distance upon time, which can also be written as time equal to distance upon speed. Now to understand the concept on problems on train, we consider this form that is time equal to distance upon speed. Now consider a basic question. A train 200 meter long is moving at the speed of 50 km per hour. Find the time taken by the train to pass a man standing near a railway line. Now in this question, we have to find the time taken by the train to pass a man. Notice that first we need to find distance and speed. Then only we can find the time. Now in the question, we have to find the time taken by the train to pass a man. So here we have the distance that the train has to travel to pass the man and speed at which the train passes the man. Now first we see how to find the distance that the train has to travel to pass the man. Suppose a man is standing in here. This man is not moving at all. And this is the train of length L meter where this is the front of the train and this is the back of the train. Now this train is moving towards the main. Now, now when the front of the train comes in line with the main, at this position the train starts to pass the main and it keeps on passing the main until it gets to this position where the back of the train comes in line with the main. At this position the train has completely passed the main. So you see between these two positions the train passes the main. So the distance that the train has to travel to pass a main is equal to the distance between these two positions of the train. So we measure the distance between these two positions of the train. Now to measure the distance, consider the front of the train. In this case, the front is here. And in this case, the front is here. And the distance between these two front is, as you can see, this distance is L meter, which is the length of the train. So, the, so to pass a main, the train has to travel a distance of its own length, which is L meter. Now suppose, in place of this main, we have a platform of length Y meter here. And suppose, this end is A and this end is B. Now a train of length L meter is moving towards the platform. Now, now when the front of the train comes in line with the A, at this position the train starts to pass the platform. And it keeps on passing the platform until it gets to this position where the back of the train comes in line with the B. At this position the train has completely passed the platform. So you see, between these two positions, the train passes the platform. So the distance that the train has to travel to pass a platform is equal to the distance between these two positions of the train. So we measure the distance between these two positions of the train. Now to measure the distance, consider the front of the train. In this case, the front is here. In this case, the front is here. And the distance between these two front is, as you can see, this distance is y plus l meter, where y is the length of the platform and l is the length of the train. So to pass a platform, the train has to cover a distance of its own length plus the length of the platform. Now we see how to find the speed at which the train passes the main. Now suppose this person and the train both are moving in the right direction, where u is the speed of the train and v is the speed of the person. Now notice that speed at which the train passes the main is different from the speed u. Actually, the speed at which the train passes the main depends on both the speed u and the speed v. To understand this concept, consider an example. Now in this example, we represent this train by this person called as t and we represent this person by these three different person called as a, b and c. Here the train is passing the person and here also the t is passing the person a, b and c. Now t is moving in the right direction with speed u and b is moving in the right direction with speed v and c is not moving at all. c is standing in here. Now it is obvious that t will take much more time to pass b compared to the time t takes to pass c. But in both the cases the speed of t is same that is u but still t takes different time to pass b and c. So it is clear that the time taken by the t to pass b and c does not just depend on u but it also depends on the speed of the person b and c. So, so it is clear that the time taken by the train to pass this person does not just depend on the speed u but it also depends on the speed v. 
and since time is equal to distance upon speed so it is also clear that the speed at which the train passes the main does not just depend on u but it also depends on v so to find the speed at which the train passes the main we have to modify u with respect to v now how should we modify u with respect to v to know how to modify u with respect to v come back to this example here t has to pass a b and c now t is moving in the right direction with speed u and c is not moving at all the speed of c is 0 now if you modify u with respect to 0 then the speed remains the same that is u now in case of b t is moving in the right direction with speed u and b is moving in the right direction with speed v since b is also moving in the same direction as the t is moving so b is making it difficult for t to pass b actually b is reducing the speed of t by its own speed so u is reduced by v now in case of a t is moving in the right direction with speed u and a is moving in the left direction with speed v since a is moving in the opposite direction as the t is moving so a is making it easier for t to pass a actually a is adding his own speed to the speed of t so v is added to u and that's how u is modified with respect to v and these modified speed are called as relative speed and we call them relative speed because this speed is the speed u relative to the speed v now we now you see the relative speeds in different cases in all of the three cases this train is moving in the right direction with speed u in the first case this person is not moving at all so the speed of this person is zero so the relative speed is u in the second case this person is moving in the same direction as the train is moving with speed v so the relative speed is u minus v and in the third case this person is moving in the opposite direction as the train is moving with speed v so the relative speed is u plus v now these relative speeds are the speeds at which the train passes the main so the speed at which the train passes the main is one of these relative speeds depending on the situation now notice that in the question you can also find a train in place of this person but the concept of finding the relative speed will be the same now coming to some more information in problems on train you will find speed in kilometer per hour or in meter per second and sometimes you will need to change the speed between these two units so to change the speed from kilometer per hour to meter per second multiply the speed with 5 by 18 and to change the speed from meter per second to kilometer per hour multiply the speed with 18 by 5 and if you find it difficult to remember these values then you then you should do like this to change the speed from kilometer per hour to meter per second change kilometer and hour one by one now to change kilometer into meter multiply it with 1000 and to change hour into second multiply it with the 360 now you solve this value with the speed and you will get the speed in meter per second now to change the speed from meter per second to kilometer per hour change meter and second one by one now to change the meter into kilometer divide meter with 1000 and to change the second into hour divide second with 360 now this this 360 goes up to this place and now you solve this value with the speed and you will get the speed in kilometer per hour so these are the concept on problems on train i hope you have understood thanks for watching